1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 31. He says, for you may all prophesy one by one, notice one by one, that all may learn and all may be comforted. So now we know that <clears throat> whenever a person prophesies, it is supposed to instruct, but also to comfort. Now we know that because prophecy is to, is, the Bible actually tells us that the gift of prophecy is to comfort and to edify and to exhort. Okay, now he says, and now watch this, because in verse uh, 32, he says, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Notice he just said, for all may prophesy one by one. Okay, but then he says, for the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. What does that mean? That means that the prophet, the person that's going to prophesy, can control what he's doing. In other words, you see in some places at different times, someone just jumps up and starts saying, thus saith the Lord, or saying something, or speaking in tongues, or something, and they disrupt a service. And they say, well, I just couldn't help it. The Spirit moved on me. No, no, no. Right there, it tells you, your Spirit is subject to you, okay? And so, what you, you determined to either sit down and keep quiet when it's right, or to give a word when it's appropriate, and do it in an appropriate way. In other words, he's not, see, too many people think, well, the Spirit moved on me, so i got to do this. No, he said, matter of fact, there's other aspects of the gifts where he actually says that you are supposed to uh, check first and make sure if someone is there to interpret before you give a message in tongues. That means you have to know the people, and you have to know what giftings they operate in. So there's a lot more to this, but notice here he, he verifies this. And he says, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets, for God is not the author of confusion. What does that mean? That means that if, what he's talking about right here, verse 31, that if you all prophesy, but it says to prophesy one by one, if everybody tried to prophesy at the same time, then there would be confusion, right? Now, again, where would the confusion come from? Envying and strife. People start trying to one-up each other. They start trying to give a better prophecy. They start trying to speak a better. Believe it or not, that goes on, right? It's very dangerous, but it, but it does go on. So he says here, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Now, notice again, God is not the author of confusion. That means he's also not the author of envying or strife right? Super simple, right? You know these things. I'm just kind of pointing them out. But now notice, in every one of these scriptures, every scripture we've mentioned so far declares the unchangeableness of God and his nature. Every one of them, all right? They're emphasizing the stability of God, both in his nature and in his character and in his actions, 